If any family of dinosaur could be said to be the most successful, then the most likely candidate would be the ornithopods, including the duck-billed herbivores that spread to every continent and evolved into dozens of unique and fascinating species. One great example of their success is Tenotosaurus. Adults weigh two tons and can reach eight meters long, although about half of that length is taken up by their long tails, and they are excellent runners. They move in large herds and thrive in lowlands and wet areas, but during the dry season they have to make do, moving from one patch of water to another in order to get enough water and food for their vast herds. During one particularly hard dry season, a herd of Tenotosaurus are drawn to a shrinking watering hole. Every one of them waits their turn to drink or feed off of the little vegetation left around slowly shrinking water, and all keep alert for predators. It doesn't take long for some to appear. Over a hill from the water's far side comes a pack of Dionychus. Three meters long and armed to the teeth, they are too small to take down an adult Tenotosaurus, but together they are quite capable of taking down even healthy adult males, though they usually went for the young. However, the pack is not hunting and makes no attempt to conceal themselves. It is for this reason that the herd does not instantly begin to flee, but remains on guard. In times of drought, waterholes can become neutral ground for all species. Even predators and prey will cautiously drink near one another, even if it is begrudgingly. The agile Dionychus know that a single Tenotosaurus could crush them beneath their feet or cause serious injury with their long tails. The Tenotosaurus, on the other hand, know not only how deadly these predators can be, but also that they are intelligent hunters, able to come up with complex strategies. The Dionychus in front of them could be a distraction, allowing others to flank the herd, so all eyes and ears were kept open. However, nothing happened. The smaller predators drank their fill, and then retreated back to a hill to get some shade. The herd's tensions eased slightly. They could never afford to fully let their guard down completely. The Dionychus do not settle, however, and appear to watch something approach them, but the herd still continues to file up to the water's edge, eager to drink. It is not until the Dionychus run towards the herd that they take notice. The Tenotosaurus take up a defensive formation, standing on their hind legs ready to stomp the smaller dinosaurs. But the Dionychus aren't attacking, they are fleeing. As soon as they get close to the herd, they stopped and turn around facing the hill they came from. Now at the top of the hill comes a colossal figure. Acrocanthosaurus, one of the largest carnivores ever to have lived. 11 meters long, over 6 tons, and powerfully built, he is the region's top predator. The Tenotosaurus begin to back away, unsure whether to flee or stand their ground. This was neutral ground for sure, but having such a massive theropod so close was enough to unnerve any species. Even the Dionychus kept their distance, seeing the large herbivores as a better option than the towering figure. All was tense as the Acrocanthosaurus approached, step by step, its eyes darting between the two species and the surrounding area. Would it keep the peace and only drink from the waterhole? Or was its hunger going to override this? The answer came when the giant stood at the water's edge and let down to drink. All parties let out a sigh of relief, though they would all wait till the Acrocanthosaurus had put some distance between them. The Dionychus and the Tenotosaurus even tolerated each other in close proximity. A rare sight, but sometimes species will put up with one another in potentially dire circumstances. The large Acrocanthosaurus finishes his drink and then seeks out the shelter of a large group of trees. Even he saw the waterhole as neutral ground in times of drought, and at this point he could afford to wait a little longer to get some food. The herd of Tenotosaurus went back to normal, well, as normal as can be with two different carnivores in close proximity. They had some complex behaviours, 
Each one upon eating a certain amount of food would leave some untouched for others to have, and when they weren't eating, would check if sentries were needed, and if sentry positions were filled, they would sleep and wait their turn. All of them looked out for the younger herd members, as they were the future. One by one they drank their fill, and looked for an area to sleep for the night. But as more and more filled in, the banks of the river began to turn into mud, and soon the waterhole was reduced to a single deep pool. Story continued. Next episode. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today we will be breaking down a dinosaur that was requested from a viewer, Tenotosaurus. Tenotosaurus was a medium to large ornithopod dinosaur that lived between 115 and 108 million years ago in North America. It is the most commonly found dinosaur in the cloverleaf formation, and over 70 specimens have been found. It measured up to 8 meters long, weighed 1 to 2 tons, and when standing on its hind legs, it could reach up to three meters tall. It also had an unusually long tail that made up about half the animal's total length. This tail was supported by strong tendons that attached to the back. This in fact led to the animal's name, which means sinew lizard. It was a low browser, using its U-shaped beak to feed on cycads and tree ferns. Where Tenotosaurus fossils are found, it is not uncommon to also find the remains of Dionychus, especially their teeth. This has led to the theory that Dionychus preyed on Tenotosaurus, and since Tenotosaurus is so much larger than Dionychus, this has led to the theory of pack hunting in order to bring down larger prey. Though this is a popular theory even amongst the general public, there is little to support it other than that they seem to prefer younger Tenotosaurus. It is even suggested that the predators cannibalized each other when they were feeding in a frenzy. Based on the sheer amount of fossils, it is safe to assume that Tenotosaurus was quite successful and widespread. In fact, its environment went through a major change during its time, going from an arid environment to a more tropical one, and Tenotosaurus was able to adapt well to the change. Some of the creatures it shared its environment with include Astrodon, Sauroposidon, Acrocanthosaurus, Dionychus, and Sauropelta. Often people see Tenotosaurus as the main course for predatory dinosaurs, and well that is pretty true, but they are also large, strong, adaptable, and successful. And don't be forgetting that. But what do you think of Tenotosaurus? Is it cannon fodder? or a survivor. What lesser known dinosaurs would you like me to cover in a future episode? Until then, stay tuned, because part two is coming up in the next episode.